Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call our May 4th CNT Parks and Rec Committee to order. And can we get, oh, uh, attendance. Attendance. Linda Maricall. Here. Here. Kathleen Pishney. Here. Stephanie Price. Here. Dr. Ellen Tuthill is absent. Dean Velasco. Here. Ryan McCarthy. Here. Cindy Carlton. Here. Dan Bickford. Here. Anita Batista. Here. You do have quorum, sir. Yes, we do have a uh, quorum is present. Okay, let's move on to item number two. Are there any items to be added, deleted, or reordered on the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Okay. Move to approve the agenda. I'll, I'll second. second. That was stereo. I think we had uh, Cindy. Cindy, we'll take you. Excellent. Uh, and let's call for a vote. Sure. Anita Batista. Here. Dan Pickford. Aye. Cindy Carlton. Aye. Ryan McCarthy. Yes. Linda Maricall. Aye. Kathleen Pishney. Aye. Stephanie Price. Aye. Dean Velasco. Aye. Motion is approved. Okay. Motion is approved. Next on the agenda is approval of minutes for the March, I'm sorry, for the April 6th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Move to approve as presented. Excellent. We have a first, we have a second. A second. And we have Stephanie as a second. Uh, and let's call for call a for vote. vote. Aye or nay. Anita? Yeah. Dan Bickford? Aye. Cindy Carlton? Aye. Dan McCarthy? I. Did I just call you Dan? Yeah, that's I met name. Ryan. I don't know <laughs> I where that came from. Names. That's fine. Just go with it. Uh, Linda Maricall? Aye. Kathleen Pishney? Aye. Stephanie Price? Aye. Dean Velasco? Aye. Motion approved. Okay. Let's move on to item number four. Do we have any speakers for item number four? I, there's a presentation first. Presentation first. Oh, great. I'll be giving the presentation. This is just a little background on um, pickleball, where we've been, where we've come to. We all know pickleball is popular and uh, lots of benefits to it. If you need more detail, you can go to usapickleball.org. Next. Between the years of 2014 to 2020, pickleball was brewing and, and becoming more popular in um, the United States, in our, at least California. So we uh, did a few things. We did add, Spark did approve of adding pickleball lines onto the tennis courts at Big Rock Park in 2015. We opened um, and um, uh, there was six portable nets purchased. They were put up and taken down by volunteers. Spark funded new replacement equipment and nets as well as a um, learner instructor paddles. The center bench was removed. Um, it was there for the tennis court usage and then um, the main gate fencing was set back through a, a volunteer donor. Uh, nope, backwards, you went too fast. Oh, I'm I'm, <laughs> community survey was uh, done in June of 2020 and it was presented to Spark and then we hit a weird pause, right? Because COVID happened. But since then, next one, since 2021, which is in the last couple of years, we have installed new semi-permanent nets purchased by the city and Spark did recommend full-time usage of the tennis courts to revote. Re Vert to pickleball courts um, and exclusive use. So in April 2022, um, a donation from uh, via the Santee Community Foundation went from pickleball players and, and led by Dave Paulson was um, provided and um, to provide the court separation fencing. So they, they turned it into quadrants and public services did the work. Next one. Here's some pictures of them out there working. You'll see how they divided the two tennis courts into... Um, four quadrants. Next one. There's more. Nice, beautiful mountain in the background. Okay, next one. <clears throat> so um, September 2022, um, another donation was made of $9,478 donated through um, funds raised with Dave Paulson and his pickleball um, uh, pickleball people. 
I don't, I don't, what do I call you guys? Pick, <laughs> um, via the Santee Community Foundation for court corner improvements. And that happened in December 2022. On PSD, or Public Services and Stan and his crew did the house, um, <clears throat> the, uh, did in house work to square off the corners. So there's a couple pictures there. The next one's pictures as well. Look at that. Wow. Nice and smooth. Sam, did you write your name in that cement? A couple initials, maybe? I would have. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Um, also, we have been formalizing some schedules and procedures. We've been working with um, the organization to to talk to about um, user safety, player conduct, um, and how the rules of play should um, occur. They are challenge courts, but they are also open to group play. So if you arrive with somebody that you exclusively would like to play with, you can rotate in and not have to challenge others. So that's posted at the courts at this time as well. Next. We also did some um, coordination of getting some advertisement out for the Beginner's Clinic, which is still being held on Sunday mornings from 9 to 11 on Courts 2 and 4, um, and then Advanced Beginner Clinics on Wednesdays from 1 to 3 on um, several of the courts there. These are free and volunteer-led, and they welcome everybody at all levels, except for the Advanced Beginners. you got to be Advanced Beginner. Um, but we have that signage up there. It's also on our website. Um, that, the pickleball group has also um, done some teen center outreach, and we've played a little pickleball there and learned about the game. Our day camp has also um, been involved. Usually at least once a summer we get out there and learn the game. Um, we also have had outreach to our active older adult and senior group, and we have done intergenerational types of activities as well. Um, we do do some rentals out there as well, not a lot. Um, rentals for tournaments and special activities, not for just court rental and reservations. Next. We also have been working with our marketing department, and we have a very de a lot of details in uh, some of those publications as well on the city website. We also mentioned pickleball in our recreation guide, and also um, we have assisted in um, creating tournament flyers for their fundraisers. Santee TV also did two promotional videos in November of 2021. Next. There's the tournaments that are, have happened and or are going to be happening. The one towards the right is the um, remaining tournaments on May 20th and 21st. Um, and it tells you how to register and all that good stuff, as it says, in partnership with the city of Santee, as well as with the Community Foundation. Next. We do have some other pickleball options in Santee. They're at Santana High School. Now, um, they're not perfect pickleball courts, but we consider them introductory asphalt courts. The high school physical education classes utilize those courts for their PE units, and it actually exposes high schoolers high school students to pickleball the game. Um, we do see some people out on our tennis courts that just kind of hit around with pickleball equipment as well. Next. So the balance remaining of the funds that have been donated um, for some of the court improvements is $4,194.66 from the fundraisers that was through the Community Foundation. So that is a remaining balance that will be carried forward for future improvements. We also have ordered a new bulletin board or a sign board that was city funded. We anticipate that to go up in the next couple weeks um, so we can consolidate some of the signage. Also a water fountain, I think that's scheduled for June or July. Um, and then court surfacing, as was mentioned at last in previous meetings, is pending. Next. Any questions, feedback, discussion before we go to public comment? Or do you want to go public comment first? Can, can you uh, show the slide? And uh, what's the total amount that's been raised by David Paulson so far? Um, I think it was like slide two and yep, four. It was. Oh, well, I didn't add those together. I knew you'd, somebody asked something. About 9,478, and the other one was like 8,000 something. Can you go back a couple more? No, back uh, towards the beginning. 8,000. Okay. Thank you. I knew you guys would want me to do fast math. I can't do <laughs> that. I'm really good at basket weaving. Um, 17,400. Yeah, you're around 17,000. Um, there is a remaining balance, like I said, for about 4,000. Would you like to go to public comment? Yes, uh, unless anyone else has any initial comments. Oh, okay. let's go to public comment. Okay, sounds good. Dave Paulson. You'll have three minutes. The clock will go on when you begin to speak. 
Good evening, SPARK members. I missed the last meeting. I was at a more important thing than pickleball. I had flown off to Minneapolis to have dinner with my mother. So she's 92, so that's where I was. <laughs> um, hey, so just, um, we wanted just to be here for questions, but actually our fundraising, we, we also have $10,000 that's not been used, that's held by the Santee Community Foundation, that's been turned in. So to date, for the last four years, we're at probably somewhere around 35,000 or total, different pots of money here and there and stuff like that. So, um, but we're mostly here to answer questions. Um, Patty Fortin's been with Pickleball for about seven <coughs> years. Mark's been for four years. Lee presented last, week, uh, last time and my wife, Teresa, here. So just here to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We have another public speaker. Okay. Lee Shannon. <coughs> Three minutes. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you because I know when I was here at the last meeting, you guys heard it. And I just thank you so much because this has been like trying to put a snowball up a mountain. It's been a tough deal, but I thank you for everything. There was a little discrepancy on the paper that we handed out, and it was just a fupa. It was a mistake, and forgive us. And thank you and for everything that you do in our community. Good night. Thank you. No further public comment. Okay. Do we have, um, so the, this item is the pickleball court resurfacing funding request. Do we have a number that's being requested? Right now, right now um, the number that's being requested by the pickleball group um, via meetings that we've had with Dave Paulson and his esteemed group is roughly around the 20 $5,000 to $20,000 range. It has been, hasn't been has been expressed, perhaps, you know, if we engage that question, they may be able to provide some feedback. But as of now, per the engineer's estimate for the resurfacing job at Big Rock Pickleball uh, Courts, it's surfacing between the concept of $32,000 to $35,000, especially with cost of increase going up, with construction going up, with concrete going up. Um, that foreseeable number could keep going up. But as of right now, it still lingers between that $32,000 to $35,000 threshold. Okay. And uh, can someone, and I'm not sure if it's, uh, it might be you, Sam, can somebody speak to what resurfacing is? Like what f actually happens with it? Because um, in some cases, I think it's just going to be a new paint and some new stripes. Is this actually something a little bit more than that? Do you, do you know? Yeah. And actually, you can go, um, I can describe it a little bit, but the uh, Mackenzie Creek pickleball back in, um, in Chula Vista did it a couple of years ago. They converted to tennis court. Um, there's a lot of different companies that do that work. But, for example, we have a, um, there's some cracks in the foundation. The foundation is really old. They have to grind those down and refill those cracks in one, one example. They have to grind some down and then slurry seal the whole surface. Um, and then um, repaint the lines and things like that. A couple of the problems we're having right now is the one crack on court six is somewhat uneven, so you get a ball. Um, and we've had temporary measures two or three times to grind it down. The, um, the old tennis court lines we painted three times, adding texture to it so that the ball doesn't skid and people don't skid, but professionally done would address that as well. Um, we have some drainage on the south side and the east side, particularly this year with all the rainy weather. Um, that we need to get a French drain or some drainage to improve to keep the water off the course, things like that. Um, and um, so that's kind of the, the major issues. And then repaint the lines so that they are more clear. And um, we have the lines that we painted over the tent. We got, we got as best match as we could for the tennis, replacing the tennis lines. But it's the colors are still off from the aesthetic of it. Also going over the, the corners where we did the concrete pour, um, they're just white concrete right now. So that would, that would be a matching color too. So. So uh, another question, and I'm sorry, I'll open it up to, to the rest of the folks for um, some questions. Uh, is all of those things you just mentioned taken into consideration on this thirty-five thousand dollar or this thirty to thirty-five thousand dollar quote we've received? Uh, uh, we 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 did, we obtained a couple estimates. We obtained three estimates over the last three years, and of course, the price continues to go up every year. So we're kind of chasing that number if we have to raise more money for it. Um, we got a. Um, as uh, Nick said, that the city engineer had a number of 32000 in June of last year. We got a prevailing wage bid um, about a month ago 
of $32,000 as well. I know it has to be bid out, if, but the number keeps going up and things like that. So from a fundraising perspective, we're still chasing the dollars to try to raise the money to, to fill this gap. And that's, that's what really the, the challenge is, uh, kind of the pressure. We have non-time sensitive things to raise money for. This is time sensitive because we feel that if it's like a $32,000 solution, give or take, and they say new construction on public courts in California is about 100,000 a court. For, um, so you're looking at 800,000, whereas this number is like 32 that we can kind of live with and stuff. Um, we have non-time non sensitive <clears throat> improvements like, like shading and concrete and seating areas, which are, aren't sensitive. I mean, we can live without for a while, but this is a number that we're going to keep. Yeah, doing. I just wanted to make sure that the, yeah. those drains well, and the colors and all that gets put up. And does that include the French drain that you said is necessary? Um, it, it, it does not. We've done that kind of on our own. We have volunteers that we've done. We've been playing around with pulling stuff back, and we're not complete, but we're just trying to keep the water off the courts. Um, it's been, um, with, as rainy as it's been this winter, it's been a challenge for us. So. Okay. Cindy. You did not answer the question. The question was, does that estimate include everything that you just said? Everything on the surface except for the French drains. Okay, okay. That, was that, the, that was an estimate. That was the question. Right, right. And they, they did a budget estimate. That company that we got, they would, if it's a bid, they would respond to the bid and get different okay. things. So. And then one more clarification. You said you had an extra $10,000 sitting around, so we have the $4,000 in the foundation that you've raised, and then you have a $10,000. I believe the 4000 is held by the city. The 10000 we turn into, turned over to the foundation, and they hold the money for us. When we want the money given to the city, we ask for them to do that. Um, we have a few thousand in our operating, but we have money that we're, we have a couple of events. We have revenues expenses coming up here in May that for our events. So, so, was, that's, so that's why the number is not 32 or 35. It's like 22 and maybe less four. I don't know, depending. We have the bulletin board and stuff we have to pay for, too. No, so. just, no, that's yeah. Just to entertain the committee members a little bit more, um, what would you say would be a respectable number that um, this esteemed pickleball group could raise by the time the last fundraiser takes place? Just to kind of gauge the, the number value for, for consideration. Uh, we probably will have 5000 to 7000 something like that. I mean, we have two more events, two more events. Um, and again, we have revenues yet to earn and expenses yet to occur, but something like that. Um, and then we have nothing after that. We've postponed some things because of our, we're, now we're making progress with this, the banner program, but it can happen in the future. Okay. But um, we have, we don't have anything else coming in after that. So. Got it. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to, Nick, and maybe you can answer this. I'm trying to get an idea of what is the funding request? What is that number? What are we being requested? Okay. So right now it appears that we have uh, roughly $4,100 in the bank in the Santee Community Foundation. Uh, Dave Paulson, correct me if I'm wrong. After all of your um, great, phenomenal, advantageous fundraising avenues, we're going to be hopefully around the seven to eight thousand dollar threshold, if I'm not mistaken. We have the four thousand from the. Yeah, no, I'm I'm already accounting for the four thousand. We, we have ten thousand held by the foundation. Okay, so right now, and no, then we have another five thousand. So ten thousand held by the foundation. So we've right already now, turned that money in from previous events. Held they, by. The it's Santee it's Community already, Oh, it's already been turned in. It's already been turned in. Okay, gotcha. So we have... Not to the city, to the foundation. Got it, okay. So we have four... So we have 14. Gotcha. And we collected donations to turn into the foundation so that they could be tax deductible for their donors. They have been hold they hold our money for. And there's another potential 5,000... Yeah, may potentially something like that. Okay, so we're, um, we're roughly between the eighteen to $20,000 threshold. So we... There's... Twenty thousand dollars that exists right now, and it's thirty-two to thirty-five. Fifteen that exists, um, but with um, the upcoming mm -hmm. fundraisers, we're we're looking at potentially twenty, twenty, eighteen to twenty after all the fundraisers are complete. Okay. So, the request would be for somewhere around twelve to fifteen thousand dollars to fund this, fully fund this, and get this thing moving. Is that okay. well, is that what we're? We the number that starts the bid process for the city, I think we'd have to defer to Nick what would start the bid process. We have the city's number and we have the, uh, the number from our sure. last budget, but the city has to tell us if that starts the bid process. Sure, sure. So right now at this current uh, time frame, we're actually in, in the process of uh, crunching the numbers as many organizations do right now during this time frame. 
So um, if there is a recommendation from this esteemed group to allocate a certain amount of funding from a specific fund, then uh, staff will make that recommendation to the city manager and we'll move forward. Hopefully at the beginning of the new fiscal year, if not earlier, if those funds are allocated earlier than that fiscal year. So with that said, right now, per the engineer's estimate, to resurface the courts, the number is $32,000. Um, minus the... The eighteen to eighteen uh, minus the eighteen to twenty thousand dollars that we currently have and will acquire, like you mentioned, sir, we're probably around that fifteen to seventeen dollar deficit um, to fund the courts. Depending if Spark sees the f the need to have a potential buffer and the monies that we don't use that you allocate can be returned to the Spark Foundation. Thank you, Spark. Sorry, Dan. Rec revolving fund. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much? Can, how much is in the city budget? that we could use for this? Not rec revolving? So we're, we're talking about the general fund? General maintenance fund, yeah. Uh, right now, all of our um, items allocated for projects are already already taken up. So right now, I believe the only thing that we could potentially make other suggestions on is potentially the CIP budget uh, to make this a capital improvement project. And it does qualify because it's over $25,000. So there could be a recommendation on the table. Typically, uh, the SPARC... Um, group makes recommendations to rec revolving fund, but I mean there there could be an instance where if the the, the community here and the, the spark group feels very passionately about it, then they could be a recommendation to <clears throat> potentially have this item be on our CIP calendar for council to consider as well, because council is the group that's going to be approving the CIP calendar. And that goes before them. What? <clears throat> and that goes before that goes before them in July. July, July, and it takes effect. Takes a while. Takes effect in what, September? Uh, July 1st would be the new fiscal year. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else have any comments? I have some comments about this, but I wanted to get, get through everyone. I have first. one more. Um, yes, sir. And Dave, maybe you can help me answer this. How involved, how easy is it to get children involved in this? Like, I'm a big proponent of anything that is related to exercise and getting outdoors. And I think the Spark Committee had a good talk with Dan the other day, the other night, about the the goals of Spark, and and he reiterated that it's really about <clears throat> you know the people having places to go and play and get outdoors and do things. So our mission statement is somewhere around that. I'd like to know how do we get more kids involved in playing, and and you know, <clears throat> is that you seeing a lot more kids playing and using the courts? And do you think you would be able to increase that with the newly resurfaced courts? We we are we always have. The last couple of years, done the summer camp program. Uh, the older kids, the middle school kids, seem to like it. The really young ones, it's they like butterflies and things <laughs> on the ground and stuff like that. Um, so, um, so we've done that. We've had, we tried to have a little bit of a, of a, a youth uh, bracket for our round robin tournaments. We had a few people that were interested in that, but some tournaments do it that way, which is just it's not. It's, it's very more of a rotating partner to get people to play and stuff like that. And more and more of those events exist around San Diego County. Um, on nicer courts, um, there's a lot of great revenue opportunities, not to mention the kids where kids would like to play and other, um, the courts are um, more uh, rentable for the city's revenues and things like that, too. Okay. But, um, but I think there's opportunities for the kids. So, so get, get the kids out there, get them playing, yeah. and get them exercising. And, and get We'd them love to do that when they're available. We have a bunch of loaner paddles that we gave to the teen center, and we, anytime the teen center kids want to come over, we help them there. Oh, good. So, that sounds like a positive thing to me. Yes. Linda, do you have something to say? Yeah, I was just wondering, um, you know, that that court, who maintained that court prior to pickleball? Did the city of Santee maintain that court? So now that it's turned into a pickleball court, it's on our citizens to maintain that court? No. That's what I don't, I, I'm not getting I, this. I had that exact same question, and I met with staff earlier on this week. Um, and one of the, the challenges is, our, all of our courts, all of our parks in Santee have a standard maintenance cycle. So they're maintained every X amount of years, they get some maintenance. And I think with, with the, the rise of pickleball and how popular it is, the need has now reached to where we need to maintain this court on a quicker path than previously in our city normal maintenance schedule. It, which, and it made sense to me when, when they told me that because it's, it's used way more than any other court we have anywhere in, in, in the town. So it is. I went and checked it out, it's, and uh, it's my a, son plays, 
And it was interesting because uh, about a seven-year-old boy came and he started playing with him, and a little old man showed up and he played with him. And so I was watch, sitting there watching my son interact with really young and really old, and they all were laughing and having a good time. And yeah. it was, you know, interesting to see the dynamics. They, they didn't come together, but they they all seemed to come to to a point to be together to play this game. And it was this little kid and this older man, and then, you know, they they move on and go to another court, and then somebody else new comes. And so the inner reaction was, you know, great. And it was great to see those courts because uh, for years, I used to play tennis on the courts years and years ago, and there was never anybody on those courts. And they weren't maintained really properly, I thought. I thought <clears> that they should have been maintained oh. a little bit better by the city. Uh, yeah. Big Rock Park kind of got left in the dusk it, uh, it, over it there did. for it's a long time. It's one of our time. older assets, yeah. And that's why I don't understand why the city sees this as potential and why they are not stepping in. And and I have to in. tell you, that's that's where I've been at for the past six months. This a conversation I had with David a while back. Um, I do believe that this is a city maintenance issue. Yeah. However... Um, I've had a little bit of a change of heart rec uh, recent times talking with some more folks going out there and just seeing how many folks are out there playing this yeah. and utilizing this. And we could push back and, and say to the city council, hey, put this park on, uh, you know, bump it up on the maintenance schedule. But that's going to take some time. And, and to, to see how much this group has done just to raise funds for themselves yeah. to get this going... And um, knowing that our current balance in our uh, rec revolving funds is a little bit higher than we usually keep it, um, I would uh, I'd like to entertain the offer to to fund uh, up to not exceeding eighteen thousand dollars to make this project happen yeah. now and not wait for six eight months or next SIP project. I'll second that motion. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. How much how much is in our fund? I uh, have that number. It's about, um, and like I said, we reconcile on a fiscal year. We are looking at about $217,000. Um, I did want to let you know that in the last two years, we did not profit as we have in the past, so the last bruise and bites. Um, we only profited um, $20,000 approximately. The year before was a COVID event, and we didn't raise any funds at that point. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Okay, so we currently have 200000 and you're asking for... 18, Eight, not to exceed 18, and if we don't use it, uh, all of that, I'd like to put it back in the rec revolving fund. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Um, I still have more questions. Okay. Am, am I No, no, you're, you're fine. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I probably don't have any issues with that, but you guys aren't listening to me. I'm listening. Um, but I would also like to give the city council some feedback like um linda said they need to up the maintenance mm -hmm. just because it's been status quo and everybody's been fine well when you start using the ball fields more you need to take care of them more when you start using the pickleball courts the dog park the playgrounds you need you need to up things so i, I think that we need to let city council know that we are interested in them upping their maintenance. I, I completely agree with that recommendation. And I made just about that same point with a few of the council members I spoke to this week and to the staff um, when I met with them. So uh, if that could, I don't know how we officially, I, I think that would be you, Nick, to, to bring that up. That could be included in one of our memos to okay. the city manager. Great. Do you have anything else, Cindy? Anyone else have any comments? Okay, so we have a motion on the table right now for the Spark Rec Revolving Fund mm -hmm. to fund up to 18000 not exceeding 18000 Anything left over goes back into our fund. We have a first and a second. Let's call for a vote. <clears throat> Anita Batista, yes or no? Yes. Dan Bickford? Yes. Cindy Carlton? Yes. Ryan McCarthy? Yes. Linda Miracle? Yes. Kathleen Pishney? Yes. Stephanie Price? Yes. Dean Velasco? 
Yes, and that is a unanimous vote. Congratulations. Okay, Dean. Yeah. So do we need to do anything to officially make note to city council that they need to be aware of this? So we, uh, we're, we're in the... We're in the well, we're, we're going to make a memo to request these funds for the city manager, and in that memo we could illustrate the concepts of potential more use of maintenance funds for more overall park infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, we could include it in the memo. Yes, Sam. Yeah, I, th I think that it, uh, once this is completed, uh, the first step is completed, I think it would be a good idea for you to present this to uh, city council during one of their meetings, even if it's during public comment. Absolutely. I will do that. Excellent. Item number five, July 6th meeting cancellation. So um, historically, the 4th of July week is, is pretty busy for the staff. And uh, there's, there's a big event. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the cool handouts. We have a big event here in Santee. And I'm sure there's going to be a sign-up genie going around for folks to sign up for, um, for volunteering. But we're uh, looking to cancel the July 6th spark meeting motion to approve second okay let's call for a vote anita yes or no this is to cancel the july 6th meeting yes dan pickford yes city carlton yes maria mccarthy yes linda Mc miracle yes <clears throat> kathleen pishney yes stephanie price yes dean velasco motion passes yeah, yes <laughs> 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 you got a little there okay I <laughs> so we are going to move on to the next item, and it's going to be the staff report and park development updates. And Nick, Ann, and Sam are going to join in. Nick. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, take a quick moment to congratulate the pickleball community. Um, uh, these improvements will hopefully... Mike. Oh, Mike. We need you. Oh, Mike. Thank you. you. Sorry. Can you guys hear me better now? <laughs> Terrific. First of all, I just want to take a quick moment to congratulate the pickleball community. I'm hoping this will go a long way in furthering our relationship and hopefully uh, more programs for the youth, right, Ryan? Yes. That's exactly. the goal, right? And that's the goal. <laughs> All right, so let's go down the list. Um, I have a few updates for the body today. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember the project that I brought up last month, the, um, the trailhead project that's south of Big Rock Park. I'm, I'm sure you guys remember that project regarding putting uh, a few parking stalls here, 18 to be exact, an EV charging sta uh, stable, um, a few bike center improvements, uh, canopy, um, tables, essentially an apparatus for people to go park, enjoy themselves, a good destination to essentially call for the Big Rock Pickleball community that they could also utilize to some degree uh, if you guys want to go hike on a certain time frame. But overall, um, I actually did present this item to the Citizens Advisory Committee um, actually two days ago. It went really well. Um, the way that this is going to work... Um, is that this item is going to be then pushed on to the task force and they're going to be considering this item. But for right now, the CAC community, which is a Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, Committee for Mission Trails, actually asked me to uh, start negotiations with the county regarding this overall park project because it is a county of San Diego um, parcel. So with that said, I just want to inform this body that negotiations will likely start fairly soon regarding this item. So I'll keep this body uh, up to speed on that. Uh, a few other things. I do want to remind everyone it is Public Works Week, May 21st to May 27th. And you may say, Nicholas, this is a park and rec committee. Why are you talking about public works? Well, I want to inform everyone that under my department, we oversee the maintenance wing of public works. Uh, DDS, which is our city engineering department, they focus more on the engineering aspects and more of the development aspects of the city. But under my department, we oversee the public works slash maintenance side to the city and uh, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. And also, to I encourage anyone to come and the general public to our next city council meeting. I believe, actually, not our next one, but the last meeting in May, we're going to be actually acknowledging all our public works personnel. And I want to make sure that they receive all the love they could get because um, if there's something we always forget is that we have a lot of respect, a ton of respect. I cannot explain the amount of respect we have for fire and police, but something we always forget Public works, they are also first responders. Everyone always seems to forget that. Sometimes they're the first people to get to the scene. Sometimes they're the last people to get to the scene. But they're always there doing amazing work. And we absolutely value all the work that fire and our sheriff's uh, department do. 
but our public works team, they're also first responders, so we can't forget about how amazing they are. Go, Sam. <laughs> With that said, um, I do want to thank everyone. I think I did see a lot of individuals from this esteemed group at Councilmember Trotter's town hall event, so thank you so much for coming by. That was good feedback. I'm sure he was really pleased to see everyone there. With that said, we do have an item that I encourage all SPARC members to come to. That is uh, the next council meeting, May 10th, 6.30. I uh, encourage every SPARC member to be there because we are going to be presenting uh, the Community Center item 75 conceptual design to City Council. Um, it's more of an update to City Council to inform how our HMC contractors are doing, consultants are doing, and also inform them of all the staff advantageous efforts that we're working on. So it'd be nice to see a few of you guys at the, at the next council meeting to express your support for the Community Center. That'd be awesome. With that said, um, one of our esteemed members, Ryan, asked me to come up with a few ideas on how we could potentially entertain a more spark rec revolving um, funding projects here in the community. Uh, but before I mention some of these potential projects that we could focus on, uh, I had a good meeting with, um, with Dean the other day, uh, a good meeting with Sam and Ann to also include them as well. And we said all of these ideas are phenomenal. I mean, there's not one poor idea we talk about. You know, Anne has a bunch of good ideas, and I credit her for all the amazing work that she does. But we can't just be spending this hard-earned money without having some type of reserve policy. Right now, we don't have a reserve policy for this $200,000 that we have in the bank. The projects I have here, we could easily spend the entire two hundred grand in a matter of three or four months. Um, I think it would be a good idea to potentially explore a reserve policy that staff and I could work with this esteemed group on how to develop it. So I think that's something that we could potentially have as a future action item on an agenda. Just to talk about a reserve policy, we want to make sure that we still have a certain amount of years in operating, operating um, revenue to ensure that our teens, our youth, are getting their regular monthly or yearly allotments. But to talk about other potential projects, uh, for example, we could start a scholarship program here at the city. For any incoming freshmen that are looking to join the recreation field, we could potentially subsidize some of their college um, tuition, perhaps books. And this is a really popular one. This is something that we could entertain perhaps seven to, seven to $1,000 per student per fiscal year. The only caveat is you would have to be a Santee resident and also be in the discipline of recreational studies or any other discipline that this committee sees fit. Potentially public works. Who knows? I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> With that said, of course, we could always fund more teen center trips, maybe three or four per year, including a transportation bus ideas, beach, kayaking, fish trips, surf music museum, SDSU football game. Uh, this is a really big one in our community, the community center. Maybe we could start uh, discussing concepts on um, art enhancements when this potential community center comes to fruition. I know our executive team is really big on art, so that's something that we're trying to push for this new community center. So maybe have some art installations, maybe some murals, maybe some type of monument signs. That's something that, that you could potentially start to inquire about. Of course, some more senior programs, something I'm always for. More luncheons, more road trips, more enhanced trips, which includes transportation as well. Let's see, on the line of seniors, we could incorporate the concept of rec on the go, you know, rec and roll, you know, as many municipalities here focus on taking recreation to the consumer rather than telling them, come to a park, you know, drive five minutes to our parks and enjoy our parks. We could bring recreation to them. How that looks is we could essentially go out to our mobile home parks, you know, bring snacks and lunch entertainment to them, music, fun, and bingo. We could entertain some of those concepts. Um, family programs like Family Fun Bingo Night and fun, Family Fun BBQ Night, tenting one, Tent Camping 101 at Santee Lakes, uh, Cacking or Boogie Boarding at the Ocean. Those are good ideas, Ann. That's pretty cool. <laughs> More movies in the park. Um, so um, talking about movies, um, we're definitely trying to push the concept of movies in the park. I know we're in talks with the county regarding a partnership that could be potentially explored in the future. So um, Santa could very well have some skin in the game when it comes to movies in the park. So just keep that in mind. It's hopefully a lot of good news and I think it would be amazing for our community. Uh, events, we could definitely expand our events platform by having more events, which could encourage Spark to have more of skin in the game regarding our more funding, uh, fundraising advantageous efforts. 
Also, a really interesting fundraiser. And um, shout out to Alicia Curtis for coming for coming up for this amazing idea. It's uh, Battle of the Chicken. It's an event. Does anyone can can someone please just maybe entertain that? And can you, can we, can we please briefly talk about it? Uh, Battle of the Chicken. I thought it was an interesting concept, <laughs> but before you speak about this, Anne, um, everyone has heard the concept of Battle of the. I think we all are very familiar with Battle of the, Battle of the Bands, you know, Battle of the. But are you aware that the city of Santee has the most amount of chicken restaurant establishments <laughs> in the general area? We have so many chicken establishments here. So how cool would it be to have an event um, bring light to all the restaurants that we have here in the community, economic development opportunity, and give them the opportunity to showcase their amazing delicacy, which is chicken. So just something to think about. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Ann. I, could, I got it. <laughs> There's a lot of different ideas we could come up with, and I, I, could, I, could keep go, I could go on for hours. You know, We could talk about park improvements, such as park monument signs. We could talk about replacement playground amenities, but I think the first thing to do is to develop a reserve policy. So before we, um, we talk about all these projects, I think it'd be a good idea to talk about that and perhaps we could start doing that at the next SPARK meeting, perhaps. I, I think that'd be a great item to, to talk about. Yeah. Right? Uh, and what do you got to top Battle of the Chickens? Mock, mock. Um, we talk about it a lot in our office. Yeah, we have a little fun, but uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of chicken places here and um, we have so many ideas about Battle of the Chicken. It could be a family fundraiser event, which right now we only have an adult event. Um, <clears throat> we could have um, barnyard animals, not chickens, but you could eat the chickens and then like pet a pony or something like that. Anyway, lots of fun ideas, um, Battle of the Chicken. So, and you know, hillikers, right? Got it, the egg. What came first, right? Okay. So anyway, those are great ideas. And Alicia Curtis, our recreation coordinator for special events, has always battled battled me to do a battle of the chicken. So hey, it's out there. Um, we've we've got lots of ideas. Okay. Anyway, in the recreation world, um, our spring classes are currently happening now. They will actually uh, most of our performing arts classes will perform at the San Diego County Fair on June sixteenth. So if you happen to be there, they'll be performing on the infield stage. Um, recreation classes and summer camps. Um, we handed you guys each a brochure, and they our registration is currently ongoing, which includes our Teen Center Junior Leader Program, um, which we actually are going to be hiring three of our junior leaders in the capacity of recreation aides this year. So we build future leaders in the recreation field. Just wanted to let you know that. Our seniors <clears throat> went to the Getty Center, and they had a great time. Thank you, Spark, for supporting and financially supporting that program. We did have a full bus, so I want to say it's like 54. Um, next Wednesday, May 10th, is our Senior Spring Luncheon. We have a speaker with the Panera Lunch. On 30, uh, May 31st, we have bingo, and we are actually going to Wood Glen Vista Apartments. So um, we'll be kind of wreck wrecking and rolling. Our parks and fields have been very uh, heavily used. Our picnic shelters are very popular. Um, including Weston Park. Just wanted to let you know that that's uh, now that it's got a playground heavily used. Also, there's a new story trails. We partner with the library at Mast Park where you can walk the path and read the book. We have our kiosks are being updated with content and our newest one with the content and a little bit more permanent um, eye-catching um, viewing is at Big Rock Park at the main kiosk, but we'll be working on future ones at Mass Park and then also um, other ones around town. And we'll be also improving the kiosk by um, repairing some that are in need of repair. Um, we have the Pickleball Tournament Fundraisers on May 20th and 21st. Um, and we also have new signs have arrived for our Big Rock off-leash area. We've installed two of them. Two more are just waiting for cement to be uh, situated, and they'll be st installed within a week. So I know Michelle had inquired about that last time. The California Parks and Recreation Society is our professional development um, here in Southern California for our careers and also our profession. Um, we are in District 12. I just wanted to let you know a few things, highlights. Becky Lowndes, our special events supervisor, was installed as the District 12 treasurer recently. 
Hannah D. Benedetto, our recreation leader, you'll see her at special events. She's not a twin, she's just a sister. The sisters look alike, but she received the Most Valuable Part-Time Player Award. And Desert Laidlaw, also a recreation leader who started with us as an intern, received a $500 educational star scholarship from that professional development. So congratulations to all of them. Also, wanted to let you know that Charlie Plavi, who um, received the Chamber Santee Person of the Year, he, he you've probably seen him and you probably haven't even said hello to him, but he is, um, helps us with every one of our special events, no matter how early or how late he um, received the Person of the Year, and he is well-deserving of it. Um, we, he embraces all jobs, and he is always the first to say, and what do you need? And... Um, to our staff as well, and he'll even do the dirty jobs. He's the one who drags the trash cans, and after a concert, they're not very pretty. But he is a hardworking, and he's so deserving of his award. So we're so happy that he won. Um, <clears throat> also, mark your calendars. Bike Anywhere Day, not just to work, bike anywhere. On May 18th, Thursday, from 6 to 9 a.m., we'll have a booth set out uh, in front of the Pathways Pathways, right? Pathways. Um, you'll see us on the corner there handing out nice goodies. It's a um, something sponsored by Sandag. Also, I will show you a video, and then I'll stop for a second. We'll show you a video about Friday Night Live. That starts on May 19th. We have four Fridays in a row that will be at Trolley Square providing entertainment um, as well as our summer concerts. You guys have received some information on that. That starts on June 15th following our Friday night series. It goes to Thursday nights for our concerts. Um, and July 4th, or Santee Salutes, is on July 4th. Our parking and canopy sales will go on um, on May 15th. Brews and Bites tickets are on sale as of May 1st, which was this Monday. And if I can find my notes, I'll tell you how many tickets are already sold. 108 regular tickets already sold, one DD, and one table is already sold. So picking up steam on that as we continue to promote that. Um, if you need more details about any of that stuff, you can go to SanteeRec.com or SanteeSpecialEvents.com. Any questions? <coughs> No, I think right. we're good. I think we have a video to bring, get your uh, contact with Sam. So we well, have a Sam's, video. Sam's got a video. Sam? Harbor Day was founded in 1874 in Nebraska. It's been a long growing tradition to um, talk about the benefits of trees. For example, this is one of my favorite trees here in town. I planted this tree about five years ago. It's called a rainbow gum eucalyptus tree. It was about four inches tall when I planted it, and now we're looking at close to 35, 40 feet. Nice, healthy trunk. The colors are amazing on this. I actually kind of love this tree. So what are the benefits of trees? Well, if you plant a tree at your yard and it shades it properly, you want to plant it on the south side of the house if you can. It'll block all the sunlight and lower your cooling bill. If you buy a deciduous tree, meaning it loses its leaves in the winter, then the sunlight will shine through the tree and warm your house in the winter so you won't have to heat it up. This is a camphor tree. They provide great shade for you and your neighbors. This is a sycamore tree. Great, big, beautiful specimen. You need a lot of open space to grow one of these. This is a melaleuca tree, easily identified by this cool bark. It's super soft and really lightweight. Here's one of the main reasons why trees are so awesome to plant in your front yard. It's called the Heat Island Index. What these trees do is cool down your property and the surrounding area. For example, we have this temperature gun. If I were to aim it at the shade, you will see that it's 67 degrees. And then when I move it into the sun, it jumps all the way up to 102 degrees. Santee residents, did you know you could get a free street tree if you live at a house that has a parkway like this? 
What is a parkway, you're probably asking? A park. Uh, oh no, RG. Well, you can go on Santee TV. Oh no, we gotta watch it. It would qualify for a nice, beautiful tree. The city will plant it at our expense and trim it every four years on our budget. All we ask you to do is water it. What we wanna do is put the right tree in the right place. That's a very important strategy when you're planting trees. You don't wanna put the wrong tree in there and that would end up damaging our sidewalks and our curb and gutters and roadways. So give us a call and we will get that tree in the ground for you. Of all the videos we show, that is my favorite one, Sam. I love you hugging a tree. Sam Tree, we call him affectionately. I knew you were a tree hugger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is um, do we have any other? Do you have any other updates? You're just your uh, your, your starring role there. Okay. Um, Anne, you done with your? Okay. Next. I apologize. We do have a public speaker. If we're there yet? Uh. No. Uh, no. Nope, we're not there yet. Just so you know, on non-agenda public comment. Okay. So number seven, committee reports, general announcements, and handouts. Anyone have anything they want to talk about? I know Dan does. Dan, I was going to give some, uh, anybody else want to go first? Come on. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about the Kiwanis Club. We had our, had our uh, uh, Junior Olympics at Santana High School last Saturday. It was, uh, it was crazy. It was fun. The kids had a blast. The parents had even more fun. Uh, it, was, it was a great event. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get my, my count, but I'm, as, as what I count is about 70 volunteers to put that on. You know, 12 guys uh, guys and gals from the Kiwanis Club cannot put that kind of a, a program on. It takes volunteers from, from everywhere. And, yeah, we were we, we, you know, probably pretty close to 70 to 75 uh, volunteers for that one event. Uh, next event is the Special Olympics and our our athlete count. <clears throat> Our special athletes, we're, we have, uh, we have uh, almost 500 uh, signed up already. And so we will need as many volunteers as we have, as we have athletes. So uh, you can go to the uh, uh, SanteeKiwanis.org, and uh, you can follow the prompts there and, and, and sign up uh, for uh, volunteering at that, uh, at that uh, event. Um, Charlie Plavi. I mean, I'm so, I'm so happy. You know, I, I, he's the guy, he's the guy that makes, that makes all these events work. He's the guy that will take any job. You know, there's a million little things and somebody has got to get them done. And if it's the garbage, it's garbage. And he just gets it done. So, um, you know, and, and, and then, and then, um, heck, I, you know, I'm talking with someone that says, you know, Charlie's, Charlie's going to be the uh, the the next uh, person of the year, and uh, and and they're like, "Who's Charlie? <laughs> Do we have a picture of Charlie?" Hmm, I got to look. <laughs> but sure, you know, if you you can find him out there. But he's the guy in the background. He doesn't look for any you know any uh, uh, recognition or, or or you know public uh, uh, drama. Uh, but he's uh, you know just an outstanding. Uh, person to be uh, person of the year. And that's it for me. Great. Thank you, Thank you Dan. <clears throat> Stephanie. Yes. I would like to acknowledge that we have a problem in town center around all the parks, Little Leagues, ASA, Sportsplex, um, the concerts in the park. And I know there's parking places across the street and over the bridge. But I'm wondering if there's any way. There's a couple empty fields over there walking into Riverwalk Grill. If that could be utilized at all. Or Oh, for parking. Yeah. You're saying, okay. Because that's, everybody walks through it anyways, but that would, and what else was brought up to my attention was the little that they have all this uh, softball gear, and to tote that 
across the street, Cuyamac or whatever, to get the kids to the field. I said, well, just drop them off and then go park away. But that's, you've got three different kids. And um, so I don't, I don't know what the solution is, but it's, it's gotten, it's gotten dangerous because of the double parking and people not abiding by the red lines out there. And and I think uh, the opening of the two new fields, which play at the same time as the other three added, fields, yeah. might have added to the uh, the with those low benches. The, the boil the boil over point. Um, so, can you take that as an action, item, Nick? And, and I don't know what could be done, but that's definitely Minji or somebody in the city to talk about uh, parking in the. Yeah, there's a few things that actually. There's a few things that have actually happened. Um, thank you, Mrs. Price, for bringing that up. Uh, we actually had a good meeting with the sheriff to talk about this, and uh, they are aware and they have been citing, but have asked for some more larger presence during the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday time frame. Furthermore, um, there is a promise for more parking at town center, but we may have to be a little bit more patient, and I'd be more than happy to illustrate that. Um, with the possible possible creation of a new community center, we are going to be demoing the uh, front grass area that's in front of the YMCA for additional parking. So that's going to be um, more parking for town center as a collective. But you've got a new new rec area over there that's going to require more parking too. Yeah, yeah. So it it, it it's it, it's Santee's got a parking problem. We all know that. It's just it's it's <clears throat> getting dangerous to where it's they're they're not abiding by the rules and. I don't have a problem walking across the street, but a lot of people don't realize. I mean, it's really not that far, mm. but it seems like a hundred miles to somebody that's got all this softball, baseball gear, and stuff. So. What about the the grassy areas on the on the east side of Town Center Park, um, like the unkept areas, not that not the green watered grass areas? Those seem fairly smooth and seem like they could be leveled pretty easy for additional parking. Is that? Even, those are those yeah. are owned by the county, and there's uh, developments being that are already approved for those spaces. Okay, there's going to be a lot of houses there. <laughs> okay, and, there's a, uh, but there's the a one, portion, Ryan. Excuse me, that we do um, have an, a right of entry for during the concert season um, and during Fourth of July. Yeah, so we get to use one of those that we areas. Utilize the, one the, of them, yeah. The it's fenced not, off area. Yeah. For now, we get to use it, but at, eventually, it's going to be fully developed. Okay. Um, but there is that one little spot that uh, uh, Stephanie was talking about. And in the past, we've talked about, I don't know, skate parks and other stuff right right there behind field uh, three. Um, my only concern is the balls are hit over that fence all the time. I was on a, I had a team there for 10 years, and I, I wouldn't want to park my car there because the home runs that are hit over that fence. But that's <laughs> definitely um, something that we could at least bring up because we own that. And, and uh, to put you know, parking there would be, I mean, I don't know what how much you have to have in and out, and I don't know all the rules and, and regulations, but that, that definitely could be something because that could instantly grab us another, you know, 50-some-odd spots. So thank you, Steph. Thank you. Linda, do you have anything, general announcements, anything? Well, I went to the Junior um, Olympics where Dan, and uh, it was really nice to see everyone turn out and uh, participate and you know, the teamwork and, you know, being a team, really a great turnout at Santana. Very cool. And then the Heroes uh, Banquet was really nice at Carlton Hills and seeing Charlie uh, at his prime and finally, you know, having some recognition because Charlie's the person that you – I didn't even know what Charlie's name was because I see Charlie – but I didn't know it was Charlie, you know. I mean, he's always so busy. He doesn't really sit and chit-chat with you. He's, you see him here, you see him over there, he's doing this. And you kind of take that for granted. So I'm glad that he was honored. Very cool, very cool. Ryan, general announcements? Uh, I'm okay. Hi. Anita, do you have anything to say? I'm thinking about it. Oh. <laughs> okay. So... With that, we are going to move on to item number eight, and that's going to be non-agenda public comment. And we have one. We do, we do have one speaker, Elizabeth Howell. You have three minutes. She has a handout that um, there's several of them, but they'll have to be shared. So we'll hand some out. <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. Let's make sure your mic's on. Is it on? 
Yeah, Hi. move that a little closer to you. you pull it over there. There you go. Hi. Yep. Hi. My name is Elizabeth Howe, and I am sorry. I am a freshman in high school. I am a com, uh, bear, competitive bear bow archer. I am a longtime resident of East County and a level one archery instructor. And I'm here to bring forward the idea that the city of Santee bring a fully accessible outdoor archery facility, build a fully accessible archery facility. The sport of target archery is, is composed of two seasons, indoor and outdoor, which in most cases require separate facilities and a variety of distances. For indoor archery, we have multiple locations locally, but in my interactions with the archery community, I found, I found nowhere in East County to practice outdoors. Outdoor practice is a vital part of competitive and personal growth within the archery community, and while there are excellent outdoor ranges, archers in San Diego wanting to practice outdoors are forced to travel long distances and incur additional costs. Due to the obstacles, I know many athletes and enthusiasts who are unable to practice regularly, since archery is so adaptable, many of our archers have accessibility needs as well that cannot be met by San Diego's current outdoor facilities. And it's also a really cool sport because it has participants from 8 to 101. And East County is in desperate need of an outdoor archery facility, and Santee is the ideal location because it is a hub of East County and would serve the archery community and beyond. We, are, we have a thriving archery community as well as local small businesses, businesses that would benefit. This site could potentially be available for the city to host classes and camps, or even host tournaments that would allow the archery community to have somewhere to practice. So far I've spoken to many municipality-run facilities in the state of California. I've created a community interest petition that as of this evening has 850 signatures in support of this park, and we have had support from, uh, of course, the archery community, small businesses, and Supervisor Joel Anderson's office. Um, I am one archer who's working on this, but I am representing a thriving community of competitive archers, recreational archers, and middle and high school students that make up the OAS program. We are asking for your consideration of this project. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, how oh, much? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Go. I, I'm not all the way through your presentation yet. The printed one. How much space would you need for an outdoor archery range? Um, <clears throat> there is a section. It's the ATA pamphlet that has a lot more of the information of the space that would be needed. Wasn't there an archery range so at Santana back in the day? They had archery, yeah. but I don't know if. Yeah. Yeah. His uh. Actually, I had some archery people that used to be in my yard that I had 500 feet long. You did? So uh, they were uh, <clears throat> archery in a way. But I, I thought I remembered at Santana there was, um, I guess, that'd be too dangerous, I guess. They used to have auto, auto shop, arrow. too, in high school, but they got rid of that as well. <laughs> I went to a place called Axe a few months back, and it had archery and axe throwing, <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> I think your presentation was fantastic. Yes. And, and, uh, Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll definitely bring it up on another meeting. Thank you. Yeah. That's, yes, Ms. Cindy. Have, what school, high school do you attend? Um, I attend an online charter school. It's called Pacific Coast Academy. Okay. Are you a Santee resident? I live right on the border of Santee and Lakeside. Okay. Um, have you investigated places that might be a potential for an archery field, or are you just like going, hey, this is what we need? Um, I have not had the opportunity to look at any places that would be available in CNT. I have met with the county, and one of the possible locations that was brought up was adding it to El Monte Park, but I wanted to see if there was anywhere in CNT that would possibly be usable. Okay. Cool. Any, any other questions? We will take this and we'll look over it and see if we can uh, come up with any ideas. I know that we have a few spaces in Santee that uh, we own that are unusable for some other things because um, I was going through them to find a new uh, disc golf park uh, a couple years back. And one of them is a very long, narrow piece of property we own 
at the end of uh, Mast Boulevard. So the first thing that comes to my mind, because I sat with staff for a long time looking for a space for a disc golf course, <clears throat> is figuring out what, what they're planning on in that space. Because there's a lot of, there's not much space in CNT that's not already developed or in development or future development or county owned. So any of the county owned properties, so around town center, we don't own any of that. Anything that's not already kind of built, um, that's all San Diego County property. And most of it's been earmarked for houses or condos or something. So we will look at it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Great job. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, next item, future agenda items. I think um, our next meeting is going to be June 1st, and I think the um, reserve policy is something it would be nice to see some ideas from staff, and then we could uh, look at it and take some action on it. Without further ado, I'd like to adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>